Can you see that? Yeah. I'm angry. And here I am once again, Call Me Crazy Show, episode 32. And uh, I want to be able to say first things first is uh, thank you to uh, Public Access of Tucson for making the Call Me Crazy Show possible. And I'd like to thank uh, my uh, editor for the show, who, uh, who's also a longtime talk show host, Marty Heath, the editor. And I want to thank my girlfriend, who I love very much, Anna, who makes it all possible. And, uh, and in the studio audience today, I had the infamous Rob to DT. Can we get a quick shot of Rob to DT around? Rob to DT, famous Rob to DT. Call me crazy show. And uh, before I begin, uh, I'm gonna go off on a tricky subject. I have a very good friend of mine. Uh, she was, she attends a. Pima College, West Campus, and a couple days ago, uh, she was telling me that uh, she was leaving school, leaving the West Campus, and that these uh, security officers who work for the security, I guess, for, uh, I guess they're red cops, I guess, I don't know what the hell they are, but uh, they made, they caught up with her, and they asked her for, they asked her how old she was, 
and they and she said, well, you know, how old do you think I am if I'm not, if I'm attending Pima West campus? Come on, give me a break. And they're, they're both cops said uh, to amongst themselves, uh, uh, she looks 11, so we might have to ask her for her ID. And it was, it was obvious that she's a student at Pima West campus, 1140 in the afternoon, uh, in the morning. So what makes people think that uh, a young kid is going to be on the West campus? But the point is that they're harassed her. They're, they harassed her and not caught all because uh, these people who are supposed to be protecting the integrity of everyone's property in the parking lot, they just don't give a fuck. And uh, I think they might have been uh, PCC uh, cops. And that just goes to show that none of them are not getting any PUSSY, and I can't say it out loud. But uh, none of them are getting any, and that's why they feel the need to uh, uh, make girls feel inferior. So uh, I can feel bad for the fucking people because uh, those people the, who are the cops harassing young women and sexually assaulting them, which is the worst part and worse, they can all go to hell because that's not what the point is. The point, of, point is that you guys is to protect and serve, not to fucking fondle get a fucking cup of feel it's not even about that and you know you, you you people are supposed to protect us and i know you guys are good people out there in the police force too but uh some of you guys ruin it and uh, my friend just told me that her day was ruined because these two asshole cops uh basically sexually harassed her and they can go to hell those two cops but not the tpd so there you go, I'm in, the, I'm in the middle, So, but I had to get that out because I know that happens a lot. Uh, a couple days ago, I guess, a week ago, we had a border patrol agent, I guess, some federal agent or whatever, he was taking uh, illegal immigrants out, he would pick them up, and then he'd go out in the fields and rape them. So that motherfucker can go to hell too, and it happens every day, And but the federal government doesn't want to admit it, but they, it happens a lot everywhere. So, there you go. Alrighty, so the first note of the Call Me Crazy show. Uh, for all you people who don't know where I am, it's an undisclosed location. Undisclosed. Alrighty, alrighty, and I'm trying to find my place. Alrighty. Okay, here we go. For all you people out there who live in Tucson, Arizona, who are watching the Call Me Crazy show, here in Tucson, Arizona, there is a, a, a building at Keno Hospital called the Pima County Medical Examiner Office. And basically what it means is that uh, they are the one responsible for autopsies and uh, uh, investigating cause of death. Uh, these, basically it's a, uh, it's a morgue, and uh, it's one of the only morgues in Arizona. And, and it's run by the county. It's called Pima County Medical Examiner Office. And basically what I'm going to talk about is that the head boss there apparently was downloading, uh, I guess, a child pornography, I guess. I'm not sure about that. I have to get back to you on that. But one thing for sure from a, a Pima County report that the head guy from Pima County Medical Examiner Office office was making sexual comments about the female corpses that were coming in through the fucking morgue every day. Basically he be the boss had an autopsy and all these women who are working for him they will hear derogatory remarks that the motherfucker will make about the dead women on the table. Oh this woman had big tits. Oh she must have been a good fuck. And that really happened. This this happened for a whole year. All our loved ones went to this fucking morgue and only to have ripped open by someone who wished they could have slept with them. And on top of that, four of the people who work in a medical office, medical examiner office, brought their best friends in there to help out with the autopsy. It's like saying, okay, for example, people in TV land. Say I was a mortician 
and I work at the Pima County Examiner. It's like saying I'm gonna bring three of my friends and we'll, know, we'll hang out, drink some beer. I'm, I'm just saying that. And uh, we'll do an autopsy together. People who are not even licensed to even practice anything were touching dead people. Oh, I wish I could name their names. I have their names, but I cannot name their names. These people are should be killed. I know people who have gone through there, and it's sad, sad for. And you know, that just goes to show the bureaucracy of Pima County is so bad that no one knows what the hell is going on because they don't know what the fuck they're running. So that just goes to show you got big brother, small brother, and the local scene. And basically, on another local note, I've been seeing at least 100,000 different fucking signs for election propositions and candidates. And what I want to know, who the hell is going to take him down the next fucking morning? I'm going to wake up that day in November. We're going to find out who won the president. And we're going to see all these signs still up. Fuck that. Politician should be aware of the fact if they're going to put up signs promoting their candidacy, they should be able to take it down when they when they get elected. But they don't. They don't give a rat's ass. One thing for sure, people in TV land never believe a politician, even when it sounds too good, when it sounds too good to be true. And it's not who you vote for, it's who you vote against. And basically, I'm gonna vote for the lesser evil because all politicians are evil. Okay, back on the on the Arizona statewide news item. Phoenix has become the seventh biggest city in the country. Okay, people in Tucson, listen to this. Phoenix is the seventh biggest city in the U.S., but no one knows who Tucson is. I'll leave you on that note. Uh, Phoenix has three point several. I'm not sure on this, but almost 3 million people in Phoenix alone. Okay, now the first biggest city in the country is New York, topping out as of the year 2000. 20 million people live in New York alone. I can't even imagine that. Tucson, Tucson only has 800,000 people here. Imagine living in a city with 20 million people. And I know a bunch of people who live in New Jersey, New York, they all, they're good friends of mine, I love them, and they always tell me New York is crazy, and it's crazy, they tell me it gets nutty. Alrighty, alrighty. In Washington State, a guy named Robert L. Yates pleaded guilty to 13 murders, concluding to a case of serial killer proportion. This guy was an army veteran Army veteran served in the army, and he became a serial killer, killing 13 people. And he pleaded guilty. He says, "I know I did wrong." No shit, Sherlock. Okay, okay. Here on a very bad Halloween uh, scandal, I heard and I read there was a trial up on the East Coast in the justice uh, courts and apparently this uh, woman was tied inside a boat among dead dogs, feces, shit, human shit, dog shit, and human vomit and covered in it for two, 20 years. This woman lived in a 30 foot long shipping vessel and for 20 years live with shit and vomit all over herself where she had sore rashes and basically her husband was, wasn't disabled was collecting paycheck from her social security and using on himself and on other people instead of her and she would get locked up in the ship for two 20 years being locked up in a, in a ship on the water continuously being fucking way motion happy like Get way motion sickness. Imagine that. Then you're covered in dog feces, 
basically dog shit. Dead carcasses of dogs all over you and vomit. And you live like that for 20 years, eating with your hand. And basically, uh, what happened, these people found out, I don't know who these people found out, but they found out about this whole ordeal, rescued the woman, took her out, rescued her, and they took the husband to a court and said, you know, this woman deserves money, she needs uh, help, you know, this motherfucker stashed all her money away for her personal use, and you know what the 12 jurors said? The 12 jurors in that trial said mistrial. Mistrial means that there's no win, no one loses. Basically it says that we're gonna do another trial again. What I want to know is the 12 people who declared mistrial in that case, it's obvious that the motherfucking husband was guilty of locking the woman up for 20 years in a ship full of dog shit. And it sounds like the limerick, limerick. But that's a true story, people, and that's uh Okay, here in uh and an, on another uh item on the East Coast in Lino Lakes, a nephew uh was having problems with his father and having problems with his family, I guess, and uncles, because they're all close knit family. Uh he he got mad and he took off with the family car. He wasn't a son, but he was a relative of the whole family. And he took off with the car. And the family reported to the cops. They called the cops and said, my nephew, my my cousin took the fucking our family car. And so they found him and took him to jail. And so the day he got out of jail, he got a gun and went back to the house and he killed everybody in the family. He killed five people in his family. This motherfucker killed his own family because he was mad at them because they snitched on him because he stole the family car. But anyway, this guy went back to the house, shot everyone in the house, killed five of his own family members, and uh, he's still out on the run. Okay, okay. Alrighty, righty, I talked about this before, Ebola. It's back here again, people. Now, instead of Africa, which is basically what I'm going to talk about right now, it's, it's available, I hate to say available, but the Ebola virus, if all you people out there in TV land, have you seen outbreak? That's the disease. So far, it's been located in two countries already, Sudan and Uganda. 70 people are already infected with the Ebola virus, 40 dead. And all you people out there who don't know what Ebola is, it's a very terrifying and horrifying disease. What it is is that you bleed from every single hole opening in your body. Basically, you bleed to death from the inside out. Your blood gushes from your nose, your anus, your wee-wee, your fucking eyeball, your ears, your mouth. And that's how you die, and it takes three days to die from that. And already in two countries, 70 affected and 40 dead. And believe it or not, the Red Cross uh, people are the ones responsible, plus other government agencies from both countries, including the U.S., are the ones responsible containing and quarantining uh, quarantine these towns. And they say they've done a great job. They know that we lost almost 100 people due to Ebola. But 100 people dying from Ebola is a lot better than 1 million people dying from Ebola. So basically, those people who died from the Ebola virus who bled to death from the inside out are basically numbered. But this thing that as time goes on, and I know this is my prediction, as time goes on, we ain't gonna be able to contain it. After a while, we're gonna have fucking hundreds. It's probably the year 2000 right now. Imagine. The state of world affairs in 2010. And that's the whole idea of the show. Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, a married couple up in New York City, they were having dinner in their dining room in a high rise apartment when they both noticed blood, blood seeping through the ceiling, falling. Basically, like you have a water leak or a rain leak at the house, 
and the water seeps through and it's making bubbles and it falls through the ceiling and it lands on the floor on wet equipment or whatever. And what happened in New York, this married couple were eating and when all of a sudden the whole ceiling is full of blood and it's dripping blood and they call 911 and 911 show up and they're like, see the ceiling full of blood and they said, there must be someone up there on the, on the floor above you guys. The, the police, New York police, go up there to the floor above where the married couple is and they found a dead baby, a dead woman, and a dead man decomposing so bad from the heat and the stuffiness in the room that all their bodily fluids seep through the ceiling into the floor below them. Ain't that fucking gross? And they say it's a home robbery. Basically, the three people, the baby, the woman, and the father, I guess they were all family died because a bunch of jewels were missing and money. But ain't that sick? You're eating dinner and you look up and the whole ceiling full of blood? I'm sorry, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm here right now. I'm so grateful to not be able to see uh, a ceiling full of blood. Okay, on a lighter note, two 13-year-old twins raped by 40-year-old 40 40 woman while the woman's two-year-old daughter stand by and cries helplessly. This is in the same city in New York. Two 13-year-old twins raped a 40-year-old woman. Is that not the sign of the times? And I don't know what the hell it is. And you know what? I think I'm done. Uh, I have a couple of things to say. I'm showing the movie Christine. And I have a couple more things to say too before I go. Uh, for the two suicide bombers who destroyed uh, the morale on the USS, S, USS Cole ship, they can go straight to hell because that's where I hope they're at because they killed 17 Navy sailormen and service women. And God, I hope they fucking run in hell because you know what, that's a terrorist attack. And you know what, the U.S. is the greatest country in the world and you can't forget it and I don't forget it. And I'll be back to you once again. And like I said, I love Tucson very much. I'll be here for a long time. And I've always been here for a long time. So until then, the Call Me Crazy Show. Crazy show, and one thing I gotta say before I begin is uh, thank you very much for all tuning in. And uh, you've been watching episode 32, and like I do every show or every segment, I try to give my thanks. So thank y'all for uh, tuning in and, and making it all possible. Because if it wasn't you, the viewers, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be having fun. So okay, before we go off on anything, I want to talk about uh the movie I'm showing, Christine. Uh, it's the first half of the movie, Christine, by John Carpenter, based on a Stephen King uh, novel. And basically, I just want you guys to enjoy the movie. It's a Hollywood, Halloween themed movie. Uh, I'll show that movie for next time. But uh, <clears throat> uh, you'll be watching the second half. Okay, now for music news. I can't believe this, but uh, that from uh, Rage Against the Machine, for all you people out there in land who don't know who he is, he's the lead singer of uh, Rage Against the Machine, and apparently I guess he called it quits, and they're trying to find a replacement, that's for uh, Tom Morello and company, and what what I'm wondering is uh, who's going to be the repla replacement for uh, the original Rage Against the Machine singer, that because uh, no one can ever replace him. He was what made the band special, apart also from the band itself, but he also made the band very special, but I don't think they'll find anybody, any singer for that matter that has that mentality to take on the duties of Rage Get the Machines because uh, their, their intensity is so, so, so heavy that uh, I hope they find somebody. But uh, that's all for the Rage Against the Machine, what I know for uh, 
for Tibbetts. And then uh, I'm gonna talk about Jackie Chan, also the Drunken Master. I be want I want to be able to see that movie pretty soon. I usually wait for the dollar uh, discount theater, believe it or not, because uh, I have more fun at those kind of theaters. And what else? What else? Uh, okay, I'm gonna go on a political note. Listen to this. Uh, China has some mil big scale military exercises where uh, they were basing the exercises, wartime exercises, but non-war exercises. But basically, if uh, every, anything is to take place, and they pretended that uh, the U.S. is the number one target. And I guess they're saying basically, no, you're an enemy, and I guess they take it to the full extent. And that makes it all more possible, people, that one day, I think, one day down the road, we're gonna have a skirmish, and basically what I think skirmish that somehow um, U.S. back uh, uh, back forces are gonna get basically China. China wants is having a hard time with Hong Kong and Taiwan and U.S. So basically they're saying that we're the one responsible for all this chaos. Of, I guess to the China uh, Chinese government. But basically, I'm letting a prediction is that I say in eight years we might have a war with China, and that might start off World War Three. And call me crazy, but that's like I always say that gets the prediction. Okay, okay. We're gonna go on a sports note. Vikings are seven and one. They lost yesterday. Vikings are doing real good. And then I believe Oakland Raiders are also on top of the heap. And we're getting a phone call, so I, I'll have to let you guys go. But I'll be right back. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but like I said, I'm back. And basically tomorrow uh, is Halloween. And I'm going to have a lot of fun. So basically, this is a Halloween special. Uh, I'm going to go off on a little tidbit again. Um, I got a couple of pictures I want to show real quick. But I'll show that later. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about this article I read and I caught up on. And this is about a grandmother who uh, was in charge of taking care of her grandson. Apparently, was on, she was a black marketeer, I guess. Uh, someone who uh, basically deal with uh, with, with uh, the people who have to uh, get certain goods across to certain places. But anyways, this uh, grandmother tried to sell her own grandson to a Russian man up in Russia for organ sale. The man was going to kill the boy and, and sell the organ. Basically, the grandmother was saying, well, I'll sell him to you and you don't have to uh, do anything. I can sell them to you, you can give me the money and you can do whatever you want. And But luckily the grandmother woman got caught and uh, so they're gonna, she's gonna go to trial. So I hope she gets the death penalty. Okay, believe that, your own grandmother is taking you out and I guess she, she lured her in with candy and promised him candy and whatnot. Little boy didn't even know what's going on but he was about to get murdered for just having his uh, vital organs removed and sold for more money later on. Sad. That's how the situation is in Russia. So let's get, be glad that we don't live in Russia because uh, that gets a very bad place. I can't imagine living with those kind of restrictions and with property and all that. And I know I'm being typical, uh, I'm stereotyping Russia, but they have a bad economy. Everything's going real bad for those guys right now. Uh, we're going to talk about what happened here, not here, but up in, uh, in a country called Ivory Coast. 55 bodies were found slumped on top of one another at, at a crazy angle. 
and they and everyone in the town said that it was the police who killed him and rounded up and killed all these men. I guess from teenagers up to old men because apparently there was the opposition of some sort of a, I guess, rising against the new government and the new government came in and took him and killed them all, 55 guys, and piled their bodies on top of one another and left it on the beach. So how about that for sad? How about that for sad? Alrighty, right, Queen Tarantino has working on a new movie, believe it or not. It'll be, it'll be his first movie since Jackie Brown, I guess. But this new Quentin Tarantino movie is called Kill Bill. Kill Bill. Uh, we're going to talk about Kill Bill. That's the name of the new movie. I'm sorry if I'm taking too long. Uh, I got a picture, picture to, to show you guys. But I gotta hold off on that. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. It's the uh, uh, Palestinians and Israelis are still going at it, and the the, the attacks on each other have been relentless. And I got some pictures to show you guys. And basically, what it all I'm saying about I'm talking about all this happening in the Middle East. Because if this keeps on boiling over, over, and over, it's gonna get dragged to the U.S. in a big mess. They're already dragging us in a big mess. What am I saying? But it just keeps on getting worse and worse to the point where Israeli helicopters uh, rain missiles on the on the leader of uh, the Palestinians and that Yasser Arafat. And he's, he's been telling the Israeli government, you know what, after years and months of uh, peace talk, it ain't going to work, so fuck you. And he said officially, the Israeli minister can go to hell. And well, the Israeli people are saying, well, fuck you. I'm going to fucking try to kill you. And now we can get this little mess up down the Middle East. And I got some pictures to show. So I guess I'll go grab those real quick. Here are some uh, students, Palestinian university students, trying, I guess, fighting for for themselves, trying to survive in that those jungles, urban jungle, with all that gunfire. Already 120 some people dead already, and this guy trying to prevent himself from being killed, so he's ready to go out. Then I have another picture also, also, and, and let's get the chaos on the streets. Let's get the chaos. I'm glad that we're here and they're over there because I ain't going to want to be going over there. Sad, sad, sad. And I'm going to go off on one more thing before I have to shut off. One more thing before I have to shut off. Let's see. For all you Scooby-Doo lovers out there, they're officially, they're now making a Scooby-Doo live action movie. Go figure. I don't know how that's going to come out. But I'm dying to know who's going to be playing. What is that guy's name? Scooby Friend. Shaggy, who is going to play that guy? I say the guy from Saturday Night Live. And Blair Witch 2 is out. I haven't seen that yet, so let me know if you like that, Blair Witch 2. I like the first one. I give it critical raves. And, and, Juve lost to UCLA. 
That's another hard one to take. And all right, get ready, people. Halloween's almost over because Halloween's tomorrow. But get set for the Grinch who stole Christmas with Jim Carrey. And couple more things. Couple more things. Uh, I can't find my uh, my notes. Okay, here up in California, there's a trial going on concerning a mother and her two children, two boys. But uh, the state of California says that the mom should go to jail and prison for prison abuse because she used to chain the kids to bed and wouldn't feed them and get, let them sit there chained to the bed and not go anywhere. And she said, she claims that that ain't child abuse. You guys are just teaching them, psyching them out. But I said, the mom's a fucking crazy bitch. Alrighty, alrighty, in India, uh, so hundreds of people uh, buy beer for a bootlegger up in India in the uh, villages and towns where they can't buy real liquor, real alcohol no beer or whatnot, so they make their own and apparently some of it was tainted as of right now 19 people have died in India due to poison alcohol 111 injured uh, including st stomach pain and bleeding that's the most horrible thing I ever heard I thought a hangover was ho bad from alcohol but fucking bleeding ugh Alrighty, alrighty, there was an actor in the movie Jim Carrey. He was a black man who played uh, the lawyer in the film. Apparently he pointed a gun at a cop and the cop shot him. And they, they, he was dressed in Hollywood costume and the cop said that he looked like he pulled a gun. But it turned out to be a fake gun. And the cop, before identifying himself, that's the most important part, that he didn't do that, killed him. And okay, and okay, and hear about, and hear about, uh, hear, hear about this story. A boy trying to imitate WWF and WCW, I guess, championship moves, I guess, wrestling moves. The, the, the little boy, 12 year boy, jumped on the bed, and he, he flipped so hard that he crashed through the window and fell two story onto the floor and was taken to the hospital. So that's very bad, that's very bad. And on a good note, I talked about The Simpsons, and I, we all know we love The Simpsons, but hopefully this is true. Uh, a, there's a movie in the works, full-length movie, to hit theater, The Simpsons, and that should go over well. And that's it for the Call Crazy Show, episode 32. Uh, more information will go on for the show. And I guess I'm showing the second half of Christine. No second half of Christine. That's next time. Huh? That's next time. Oh, that's next time. Sorry about that. But sorry about the low audio and the first half of Christine that I'm going to show, right? Yeah, they already saw that. Okay. I'm going to show Christine. Okay then, Tucson, Arizona. Thank you for tuning in. And like I said, the people who help me out are endless and endless and endless and endless. And I'll see you guys later.